Today, I'm talking about softwood lumber, the market, prices, what is happening with supply and demand, to give an idea of the conditions that we're in right now uh, after October 2022, and what we might be able to expect coming up till the end of this year. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you another update. Fabulous information for what is happening with softwood lumber panel, uh, the general supply demand situation in the marketplace right now following Labor Day. As I've said before, usually historically the seasonal trend would be prices dropping around now, especially uh, following U.S. Thanksgiving. Prices really start to drop as construction activity falls away for the winter season. And normally the cycle would be that prices would start going back up around February, the end of January, depending on what's happening with U.S. housing. And so we did have that this year. The uh, price of benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number 2 and better did waffle downward uh, into Labor Day and through September, continuing to drop uh, leveling off a little bit into the end of October. And so for um, the end of October of this year, what we have on that benchmark item is uh, US $480 per thousand board feet uh, right there at the end of October, which was flat from the previous week, indicating that customers and suppliers are finding a medium of where they can be satisfied with the price they pay or the price they sell for and keep the volume moving as much as possible while we get into this slower building season. And so people will remember how that great fluctuation in prices, the extreme highs and then the response uh, dropping down quite low. I'll show you the graph in a minute. That seems to have worked out this year so that when there were highs and lows, they were not as severely high or as low as they had been in 2021 or 2020. As everyone knows, those two years was quite the anomaly. Um, we'll look back over that in the future as a uh, unusual time. You can't really base the forecast of what's going to happen, you know, next year or in 2024 on what happened during those past couple of years. But at the same time, you can't really use historically the previous 10 years from 2008 to 2018. You can't really use that either because macroeconomic conditions have changed completely. The housing market situation has changed completely. And of course, inflation, as everyone knows, has uh, raised up prices. The transportation issues with supply chain for forestry, they're better now than they were. Uh, but still a problem for um, a lot of reasons and much more of a problem for the builders, not so much getting their lumber into their work site, but their other materials. There's still long, long delays, things like toilets, fixtures, garage doors, tiles, all kinds of things are taking a very long time to arrive. Uh, spotty uh, distribution in terms of sometimes there's, uh, you know, a flood where suddenly everything appears and then there's another three months where you're, you don't even know where your shipment is. And so in terms of the lumber, uh, we might be into a little bit more of a normal seasonal historical trend of the price dropping now at this time of year. Of course, not as low as what we had become used to, like I said, in those previous 10 years from 2008 to 2018, because the cost of production for the sawmills has increased somewhat double. Uh, so during that uh, low time for U.S. housing starts, uh, when the benchmark 2x4 price that I was just explaining was hovering down around $250 per thousand board feet, the mills were losing money or not making money. At this point, where the cost of production, for example, in British Columbia, and this is again sort of an average because it, it definitely depends on the type of mill and where they are, let's call it somewhere around $500 per thousand board feet. So 
this price that we have right now, 480, like I just said, that's getting close to cost of production. Uh, and what this means is do not expect this price to go back down to 250. I still get comments and people saying, you know, when's it going to get back to normal? This is normal. It's not normal, but it's the normal. And that's what industry has gotten used to. And that's what the customers, the builders and the retailers are also having to get used to. And so the reason now just at the end of October that there's been a bit of a firming up of the price, which wouldn't necessarily be happening, you know, sort of around now, like I said, into U.S. Thanksgiving is where the real uh, market situation is discovered between the customer and the seller of uh, inventory in the field. And what is the, you know, the last little few sticks that the builders need or the retailers need to fill in on their shelves before the end of the year. Um, people don't want to stock up on inventory at this time of year. They just want to run lean and have what they need for what they know their activity is going to be. And so the um, firming up of the price, uh, leveling off at that $480, I'm going to say is because there's been quite a few curtailments and uh, downtime taken at various mills, a lot of them in British Columbia, but also in other jurisdictions. There was the uh, strike at Weyerhaeuser uh, affecting the Oregon operations. Um, this had a massive effect on Douglas fir prices. So when I quote you the Western Spruce, I use this as the benchmark because until very recently, it was produced at the largest volume across North America. At this point, um, the data is starting to show that Southern Yellow Pine volumes might be overtaking the Western Spruce. We'll have to see as time goes by if that stays true. But Douglas fir, a coastal species, this is a very popular product for builders and architects on the U.S. Eastern Seaboard and for higher value homes, uh, custom homes in Texas and California. So the stoppage of work at Weyerhaeuser, something like five weeks, I think, uh, has shot up the price of Douglas fir by $150. So when I say that these operators in British Columbia and other jurisdictions who took downtime and curtailed a little bit during the summer, but now have announced quite a few curtailments to the end of the year. This is what's stopping the price from dropping to the lows that people used to uh, expect for the end of the year. And keeping this sort of level that we're seeing right now, whether that will continue, of course, we don't know. We have all of November and half of December to go through before the real uh, downtime is taken, especially Quebec. They close completely, at least for one week, potentially for two weeks over the holiday season, and also in British Columbia and other parts of Canada for the holidays and uh, the new year. So let's take a look at the graphs, and I'll explain a little bit more uh, in detail of what I'm saying here. And you could look at uh, what the data is saying and make your own understanding for yourself. So at the last week of October, the price of this benchmark item, Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4, number two and better, was US $480 per thousand board feet, which is flat from the previous week when it was also 480. It's down $44 or 8% from one month ago at the end of September when it was US $524 per thousand board feet, and it's down $150 or 24% from the end of October 2021 when it was $630 per thousand board feet. It's down $180 or 27% from two years ago at the end of October 2020 when it was $660 per thousand board feet. Now you can see at the end of this graph how into November and December those trend lines are matching up. It's very interesting to see what's happening here if this continues, but this is something new that has developed over the past couple of years, which didn't happen before. Here we have those five benchmark items, uh, Dimension Lumber and the one panel, Canadian Softwood Plywood out of Toronto, which is in Canadian dollars. The rest of them are all in US dollars. 
This is what I mean by those massive fluctuations that we saw during the early parts of 2020 and then in the middle of last year. And then again, the recovery back down just as severe. So now we have, if you can look toward the right side of that graph into the end part of this year, moderating those items going up and down against each other as the customers switch back and forth. Your Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce, Southern Pine, I'm tracking uh, on the east side in this graph. Also your Douglas Fir as interchangeable essentially in terms of all of these items meet the building code and the construction, uh, the builders and the contractors can choose between those items, whichever they prefer according to the price that they like or the deal that they like that they're gonna get. Here we have those same items against each other in a table showing you the actual price right there at the end of October this week uh, compared to last week, how much of a change that is, and then compared to one month ago, you can see how everything's been dropping. But take note, uh, second from the bottom, that Douglas fir, as I was explaining, due to the strike at Weyerhaeuser, this price is now up compared to one month ago even. And that's because supply dwindled. The Douglas fir is only available out of the coast. So it comes from British Columbia, Washington State, and Oregon. And if a large operator like Weyerhaeuser cannot produce for up to five weeks as that work stoppage was, that affects supply and demand to the point where the price rose up by $150. Okay. So that's the very latest uh, data and market update for softwood lumber across North America, Canada, and the U.S. If you like what you see here, then subscribe here on YouTube to be notified when I make another video and click like so that it will get suggested to other viewers. If you need more details rather than just these few small things that I put uh, on the website or on YouTube infrequently, then subscribe to the actual dashboard. There's 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that are updated every Friday morning. We do the market survey on Thursdays, get the information from industry all across North America, all the different regions, the different species, the different products, dimension lumber boards, studs, uh, panel, plywood, OSB, cedar, all of these different things every week and uh, 1,300 words of market commentary explaining what is happening and why those prices are changing. And so if you go on my website, there's a link in the caption, you can request a sample and see what the uh, commodities that we track are and what the current price is. And then you can decide to subscribe to the actual dashboard and you don't have to wait until I make a video and do a little snapshot of a tiny bit of an overview month after month. But you can see everything that's happening every week as it happens.